uh, our panel uh, discussion. And thank you for uh, joining us today for this panel discussion on design uh, principles for HRI. Um, yeah, and also thank you to our speakers for sharing your presentations and insights. So yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to ask uh, Kershaw first. Uh, so you are all designers of robots and each of you target different types of robots and also different environments and even different users. So I think it would be interesting to dive into this a bit more. So my question is, how do, the, how do design needs differ for robots in practical setting with the minimal interactions um, uh, with the human? And like industrial environments, like a second DC and like maybe factory and also farm as well. And compared to those for daily life where interaction is more complex, like a social robot, maybe a robot uh, in 784 and the robot that you shared uh, for the first, uh, for first, for the first work, like uh, delivery robots. So what, uh, what are the specific design requirements for robots? That's that's my first question. So, me, okay. Well, for 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 me, uh, um, I don't have an holistic vision. I have a uh, vision from the industrial design and industrial design about the aspect that I talked in the presentation. I see that well in intra logistics or in logistics or in industrial placements, the people hope to work with a machine and, and want an, a feedback that do him in, in his presentation, some sound that help you to understand what success, some uh, type of light for know what are the state of the robot, if, it's, if it is working good or not, of are doing the need, the things that you need. And uh, more complex is when you are to to try to, to, to interact with different people, but the people are too different. We are, any one of us, we are different. We are from different countries, we think different. We have different objectives when we talk with another person. This is too complex for a uh, for an, uh, robot, no? And uh, when you see one person, you want to interact with this person and talk with, with her, and okay, I am very interested in this person, but have something that or told something about that is interesting for me, no? And how and choosing the aspect of the robot, the feedback that give the robot sometimes is better if it's more neutral. No, I remember Hiroshi Shiguro when do the Ankani Ballet theory, no? And I try to use sometimes, and I try to understand sometimes, but him is look as a him, and and. This conflict is too open for, 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 my, for, for my job, no? for example. Always I, I want to ask the people, what do you prefer? Do you prefer something icon, something similar to human, something more robotic? What is most useful for the use cases that you want to use this type of product? No? For these cases, okay, this platform is better. No? Uh, in addition to that, I can say that my also I don't really ha have m any experience actually related to social anthropomorphized robots. So I was mainly working with either industrial in the farm context or more like um, and non anthropomorphized robots. And uh, what we have been seeing, for example, the context of the dairy farm, all the robots are like designed to be fully autonomous, so they don't really need actually anything from the humans on paper, but in reality it was so different. The milking robots supposed to be 100%, like a technologically it is super advanced, it can able to detect the teeth of the cow, like just independently really attach it on them, so and it can also guide the cows to into the milking machines, which cows are not always very willing to, so farmer has nothing to do actually. It can just check the, from the app 
like what how the milk, milk production is going and does he need to attend the call or not. Uh, but like he was showing us his phone, every literally three seconds he was getting an app about something is going on in the ma like a machine. So it is not supposed to be like a in interacting, but it is actually interacting all the time. So he was really frustrated, and there, even something that is supposed to be like a, for an industrial environment, we really saw for potential to use design methods to understand again needs, the context, and how. Could could we design better? So I think many of the methods I showed here could apply even though the robot is not supposed to be social in any way. Uh, maybe another thing I wanted to say that also, yeah, those things, um, yeah, I, maybe it will be a too bold because I, I, I just uh, I don't really know, but I'll just say it anyways. But the considerations that we need to give for verbal robots, the social robots, probably also apply to the like other types of robots as well. I, again, looking at the work with the delivery robot in the um, restaurant context. I don't really see many differences how we would do this if this was an anthropomorphized robot versus it was a, like a, a non-verbal robot as it is. Uh, because it has to communicate a message and we really have to find the best way to do this, like the way that is really appropriate for the context it's in, appropriate for the people that it will encounter, interact with. Um, so I really don't see much difference, but... I have to think it through a bit, <laughs> like it's, uh, you can also, of course, oppose me. Uh, but that is my <laughs> take. <laughs> and uh, I want to add my opinion. And uh, the difference between the industrial robot and uh, like social robot or humanoid robot, uh, the majorly, obviously, the, the level of the anthropomorphism is really differs. And in industrial area, and uh, users, they don't expect the robot is human-like, but they can maybe expect it's like a uh, living creature-like, but not uh, human-like. So uh, that's the main difference, I think. And uh, the other difference is that uh, uh, in industrial robot, uh, it has uh, different and various kinds of interactions. Uh, including not only for the human-robot interaction, but the, uh, some other interaction with robot, such as uh, the system and robot, and uh, the infrastructure or building and the robot. And uh, in, in the, the uh, context of the industrial robot, uh, it shows the <coughs> interaction uh, information with the uh, systematic components to the human. So uh, it anyway, uh, it visualize or uh, make it tangible, uh, the, uh, make the uh, information or status tangible or visualize and uh, express them to the users to uh, understand the, uh, the status and the connections of the uh, system. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, but the uh, uh, social robot or uh, humanoid, they don't have a very uh, serious connection between the systems and uh, buildings in infrastructure. It, so it, uh, the kinds of interaction to express is quite different, I think. Yeah, um, thank you for sharing your opinions based on your Lear work experiences. So then I can maybe take uh, questions from our audience. If you have any questions, can you? Hi, well, thanks for your presentations. I have a Question, I mean, as designers, I think that sometimes we might be in the middle of, well, I mean, as you can see in some of your work, uh, in which you try to integrate or include different stakeholders in the process, but also as an, an industrial designer, you can see it clearly you are between the technical part and the, and the user research and marketing, etc. So I was wondering what kind of tools or methods you, you use to negotiate, actually, between all these contrasting sometimes interests that the stakeholders... This is for me, no? The question. Yeah. 
it's for everyone, but I, <laughs> I think everyone has <laughs> might have different uh, ways to to deal with this. Well, um, are different for the different uh, feedback that we I will I receive for for the people, no? From the, for example, for the assembly people that there are assembly any robot and, and give us feedback about the customers. We we use an a journey. I use an a journey map and an Excel that is interactive with them. Then include in uh, we have a, an a uh, file of every inside inside the Excel. We have an a uh, different layers uh, talking about the problems of different robots that we are in the with the customers. No, and and you can check if there are uh, electronical, mechanical, or whatever. No. The, when we send the, the robot. Each other is when uh, we start on a project and, and we need to manage how to, to create an, a robot. No? We use the information that we have in, from the validation team, from the team field technicians that talk every day from the people. We do an, uh, interactive sessions with the uh, roles of stakeholders and, and, uh, and we do an um, paper talking about the what are the objective and the scope of, of this project and uh, for this I need many time more time sometimes the time that I use for design the, the, the robot and each other is understand the market go to the fairs and and do um, and apply this 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 feedback to our products for for uh, for learning for learning and a better product as, as as possible, no. But the marketing people tell you we these are our competitors. We need to be better for console more, no. And I hear him, and I and I try to translate this to to the customer journey. For me, customer journey is too important, but give me an uh, holistic vision about the where where are the problems, what we need to change, and uh, what an on focus and what are waiting, no. Um, yeah, so how do we negotiate between different expectations and needs? Um, yeah, so I, I'm in a very design bubble. I work at the design faculty, I engage with design communities, and in that community we are very, like, uh, you know, <laughs> in our bubble, quite happy. Oh, we are great, we are, like, design can do everything. And every time I'm out of that bubble, I really feel like a f sort of a fish out of water, because it really requires, um, so I'm more and more than this, understand what design can't do. Uh, so it's just very different than like of how we kind of see ourselves. And one part of it, maybe engaging with different stakeholders. Uh, so we want to start a project with cleaning unions in the Netherlands, because as the like a top or like cleaning companies want to integrate more cleaning robots in the, like uh, for the buildings, but the worker unions are very much against it for different reasons, most of them ethical reasons. Uh, so they really don't want any robots, but we are, they are pushed to like, a, like have a robotization. And as designers, we are in between trying to, I really also understand the, the cleaner's point and I agree with them, but then the tech push has to be there. So our role is the way to maybe just uh, try to show each other like the benefits and the, from the other side of why this must be coming from. So it's like really this bridge uh, or like a, let's say translator uh, role that I see. Another challenge I have uh, communicates, yeah, so for example, again, going back to the robots, now the project that we are working on is about designing the sounds for the robots, because just as the light feedback or the movement feedback is confusing, there is no consistent sound feedback among their robots, so they just want to clear, uh, create a very clear sound language, so the moment that you hear something, you immediately understand what is it about and which particular robot. Is it a milking robot or is it a cleaning robot? So what's happening kind of a thing. Uh, and for that, again, our student designed this very nice uh, vocabulary, so it's very clear, it's just like a language, uh, but the engineers don't want to implement it. It is really, uh, the, I also understand, they have very urgent issues, they have to make the robots work, 
this is more like a luxury thing to have on top of it. Uh, but uh, they just don't want it. <laughs> so the problem is that then we are trying to really demonstrate in place how impactful it is. So we are really trying to also bit get backing up from the farmers that they to say that they really see the value of this and stuff. Uh, so I think most of my job in this field is about convincing, <laughs> which is a bit, uh, yeah, which I understand. There are different realities uh, in different places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, and um, so I think you are in this situation. Yeah, of course. Right now, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, nowadays, I uh, almost mostly use the prototyping to. Uh, convince my uh, design concept to other people, like including mostly uh, engineers. Uh, I have tried so many uh, methods or uh, materials to use the make a uh, kind of uh, negotiation with uh, other <laughs> stakeholder, such as uh, writing the product, white paper, or some documents and uh, the schema of the system, but and uh, uh, the anthropologic the uh, user study, but uh, because I I, I think uh, I'm in the working in the tech company and uh, and uh, the the members are mostly uh, engineers, so they don't understand fully of the my uh, documents and the human research, uh, human study research. So uh, nowadays I, uh, uh, I realized that uh, making very quick and dirty prototype and uh, as uh, many as possible in the design uh, stage and make it something the tangible, and they can understand the, the concepts. So yeah, that's the uh, most effective uh, methodology for me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like love hate <laughs> relationship always. So um, yeah. Please. Hi. Yes, we have a question online from Federico Giaumo for our anthropomorphic robo robots mainly. And the question is, do you design the robot to behave in a certain way in all settings or does their behavior, should it, or have you experimented with changing the behavior depending on the conditions? Um, so an example is, if people are around, should the, the robot gaze show where the robot is going to move next? as opposed to when there's nobody around, um, you can move, for example, the robot limbs in the most efficient way and, st and the most, instead of the most natural way, like um, apparently Atlas from Boston Dynamic does at all times. Who would like to take that question? <laughs> I can break it down again if it was a bit long. <laughs> Is is not 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 easy, you know? I I have the same question. <laughs> this this is the problem. Always you you work in a proposal. You try to hear in. You try to adapt to the requirements of the project, and you, you try that was ready for the people in use when they arrive to the control team or core team, and every system is ready. You can check with the prototype as him told. No, no. You you prepare a prototype. You try to test if this prototype gives you the feedback that you hope. And sometimes it says that it's not good. Sometimes it says that you, you need to do an iteration, for example, as I explained with the arm. And I have the same questions when I try to design some head in, in, in a complex system as an biped or, or whatever, no? I don't have an, a clear solution, no. I have an, a process. And, and, and I try to hear in for understand what is the better decision for the use case, for the platform, for the, the, the thing that we hope to, to use. It's okay? Yes, thank you. And maybe, Mayushin, at Never Labs, um, do, for example, the robots move faster when there's nobody around in the corridors? Or 
or do they always go at the same speed in case somebody comes out? Uh, uh, in in this stage, uh, I mean the the uh, we uh, define the area that on the map. Uh, I mean the the uh, in, on the lower controlling system called uh, arc, and <coughs> we define some areas to uh, make it robot go faster, and some areas doesn't. Uh, so it's not that interactively or dynamically the speed the change uh, change the speed but uh, we are in progress uh, of researching how the robot uh, recognize the people around the robot and the behave so uh, I at this moment I cannot uh, tell so many things <laughs> and some you have you know some other project like Cobra and uh, but uh, yeah but as Mengsu mentions uh, we have Arcbrain I mean we have robot robotics management system called Arcbrain uh, made by NAK and uh, now uh, let's say we have uh, technology limitation right now. So as he said, we can select some place as, uh, okay, this is place for, um, let's say like only for delivery. So robot can move very quickly because there are no many people always. But okay, this place always robot should care for about like, uh, like obstacles and people because there are always many uh, colleagues there. So yeah, uh, this is the way uh, any NLK uh, try to um, try to consider the kind of situation, and I think, yeah, maybe as he said, yeah, you can you will design uh, like automatic <laughs> interaction, I guess. And uh, I remember it. it's not the example of the uh, changing the time, the speed dynamically, but. Uh, uh, I know uh, several a similar example that we are trying that uh, robot uh, with the uh, 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 visual recognition uh, robot can tell uh, how, uh, tell it if the robot itself can uh, get into the elevator or not to uh, how to say. Uh, sensing how many people in the elevator, in the car, and which position are there. And uh, based on the uh, recognition, robot uh, def uh, decides it will uh, get into the car or not. Yeah, that kind of a trial we are doing. Hi there, thanks for some lovely talks. Uh, really nice to see such diverse examples as well. So from server farms to farming, <laughs> it's different sorts of farms. Um, so for uh, those of us who are academics working in HRI, I wonder what problems you uh, think we should be working on uh, or what questions you would like us to be, be trying to answer. Can yeah, can you repeat it again? Sorry. Sure. Yeah. So for uh, you know, for those of us who are, who are academics uh, working in HRI, what are the uh, what are the problem areas you think that we should be working and doing research on? Or are there any are there any questions you know burning questions you think that we should be trying trying to answer that would be helpful for your for your work? Me, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't <laughs> I don't know. My my job is too simple. I try to hear in. I I use documents for work with people, uh, and uh, uh, I create a um, drawing scale one to one. I discuss with the mechanical engineers. I discuss with the people of marketing, and. Uh, 
I don't know what type of questions can I do for 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 be clear for you, but uh, for me, biggest question is the impact that I do my work in the world is a waste for my child, for my son. This is the first question when I get up very early. And I try to reduce. I go in bicycle, I don't have a car, I, I, I try to do ecological things and I try to push for two electronics more sustainability actually. I try to reduce the number of the parts that we use in a robot. I try to reduce the, the weight, the transport. This is my principal problem to solve today for robotics. It's a, my scope, personal scope. Other thing is try to be happy with the work. No, we, need, we, we take our time for work and uh, come here learning, see his work, hear your work. It's too important for me. Is uh, give me feedback for know the impact that I uh, my job in with with another people that work in the same things, and. Uh, Tito, uh, Mike. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. It's okay. No, no. You you have to put your <laughs> mic like and, this. You have to hold your mic. And nothing more. Nothing more. Okay. It's it's, uh, it's too simple. Could be working the system is complex, but this is the more fun, working a complex systems. But the life is too simple for work. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, yeah. it's okay. And Natalie? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was uh, going to say maybe the challenge to be working with uh, social scientists and so maybe these are the things that I will say it's not for the more computer science or engineers to be focusing on but maybe working closely with other humanities-based disciplines to be more aware of the implications of the things that are put in the world. So it's really maybe the engineer's job to really make this work as effective, as efficient, as like make it impactful as possible. Uh, but sometimes I have a feeling that maybe the bigger questions, uh, societal questions about it's this, these reflections are not there. At the end, the same work should be done, but maybe with more awareness of it. Uh, so I think that not a particular question to work on, but maybe way of working, really doing more interdisciplinary working. I think now working with users is quite established, but I'm also like, a, uh, so it's transdisciplinary part may be covered, but interdisciplinary part to tackle challenges for, with different expertises. I think that is what is expecting us, especially in terms of uh, ethics and moral choices we make. Yeah. And Myungsu, you want to ask some? Mm, no, sorry, but <laughs> I don't have anything in my mind. <laughs> okay, okay. So do we have another question? Thank you so much. I wanted to go back to the sustainability point raised by Tito, and I was just curious and wondering for all of you, like how much is sustainability kind of taken into account from the, like how much is there a sustainable by design sort of robotic process? Is there something that gets, is in the company values perhaps, or is in the, you know, uh, the, of the companies that you work with or for? Is it something that you, that, you know, people start to think about? How much is this sort of like embedded in the, in the entire design process for a robot? Uh, for our company, to be honest, uh, our uh, deve development of the uh, robotics uh, business is uh, at the very early stage. So to be honest, we don't think about <laughs> sustainability. Maybe, but uh, maybe some later, uh, some years later, and uh, we have some uh, uh, some uh, kind of uh, issues on the, the robot maintenance or some uh, manufacturing, then we can maybe uh, pre we prepare for the, some strategy for the uh, sustainable uh, development, I think. Yeah. Okay, and 
So my, again, limited experience also farming, uh, so it's very <laughs> so, uh, yeah, discussable uh, context. It's very, uh, yeah, the farming industry itself, of course, quite uh, sustainability, it really raises concerns, but on top of it, you put all these resources to make it even less sustainable. So it's also in the Netherlands that it's uh, the, this whole industry has been, I don't think anyone follows, but uh, political. So in the past uh, three, four years, there's active demonstrations by the farmers because the government is trying to put some sustainability measures on the whole industry. So it's a very ethically charged uh, topic, community. And I have been in my very small attempts trying to raise it to just understand what do they think about it with the company. Um, many people don't even think anything about this and some of them just uh, don't want to talk about it um, so uh, that is the thing maybe what I was trying to say it, 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 it's perfectly fine it's not to put any moral judgment or anyone but just to create this awareness that what kind of infrastructure you are part of it is important uh, so now I think we are in the more awareness level hopefully you ask more about methodologies processes in place I didn't observe it my, myself yet, but I have very limited experience regarding that. But it is a very, very important point that you raise. Yeah. For me, there are two questions, too important in this way. First one is the, the company have the money for pay and know what is the, his impact in the world. For, for know what is your impact, you must to pay. You must to pay for know what is the impact the uh, um, office, parts, um, many travels that you do, uh, what events that you, you do in, and uh, ev everything in one company has an impact. You can measure. Everything is possible to measure today, but you need to pay. And this is a solution political, of course. Uh, another re reason is, uh, okay, anyone can choose. I choose to do this effort as an assenting personal. My hardware team think the same. We try to do. It's not a high git line. It's a git line that do in a hardware team. I try to translate to the electronic team. They give us support. The chief engineer are super agree to this point of view. And, uh, but it's too difficult for one company include this type of high level vision but you need people working in it. And so I'm trying to, you, Impal could be looks as a big company, but it's a little company. And uh, any person that we have inside, we need for do something. And if, if we want to pay someone or some company that we are trying to do, we need an money or find an money for, for do it or find a person that can work in it not only two years or three years we have an uh, answers, so, you know, some, some plan that give us an, a continuity for this given a, a way for work as something usual. So it's like individual for now. It's in the teams, but do not in high level. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I think this is very important topic. So yeah, I think it was a really good question. And yeah, Laurent? Yeah, uh, my question was more related to the methodology in design, related to the first presentation. So you said that among the well-established uh, techniques um, is to use, or methodology is to use user studies plus uh, statistics, computing p-values. And you said that in HCI, people start, or the community start to go beyond this. So I would like to know what this beyond mean. Uh, basically, because I'm not in these communities. Yes, uh, yeah. For example, without really showing actually any statistics that it made an impact of this, like this way of, let's say, dramaturgy as a principle to design movements, uh, we wouldn't necessarily, like in ideal case, have to convince that the, our results are impactful by showing statistics. We can really show maybe through more like a qualitative feedback, for, like from the actual field, or just as a reflection on it, what kind of novel way of designing robots could be, uh, without showing any metrics, numbers, actual change. 
it, we could still publish it, to put it very simply. Uh, but like the experience in HRI, that every time I submit something, I get a comment, but this is not a study, <laughs> like uh, how do you know? Uh, and we, we address it, so I, I might be able to publish, that's good, but it's not like it's automatic reaction is that I want to see actual difference. Uh, sometimes we just don't also do user studies, we just present an artifact, just more like artistic way of things. So this is how we envision the future with a, let's say, cleaning robot could be. If this is the vision, what kind of challenges could be? What kind of like uh, spaces that could be inspiring? So it's more like storytelling. Um, that is also quite as accepted right now in the HCI. Uh, we also have like research through design, so you are still conducting research through very designerly ways. For example, sketching or like doing maybe like a sort of a narration of your own experiences as a person, as a researcher, as a user. So it's much more, I would say, artistic in the explorative, open, anecdotal. Those are like a publishable in, in addition to numbers and also showing interview costs and stuff. So this is, a, I think, new territories. Yeah. Yep, and... Hello. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, yeah, I'm changing seats, so you don't realize I'm asking many questions. Um, now, maybe it's, uh, I have a question related to what Nasli, I think, quickly mentioned about how we are realizing about the limitations of design. And I'm wondering, I see also in the community this somehow feeling that we realize we are not, not almighty and we can save the world. So I, I'm wondering uh, mainly, yeah, how much influence we can have. I mean, I, I see how the design also, I mean, I, I see in the community how it's being pushed towards being more business oriented somehow to, in order to be more relevant. So I'm wondering, yes, uh, how much influence you think we can still have and if there is a way to maximize this influence that we can have. Yeah, it is a very good and very difficult question. I really don't know. It's just I think we should really address this as a community also. Um, I think currently, which is already something good, but our effect don't go beyond making interactions better and whatever better it is, maybe more pleasant, more flu fluid more smooth, uh, more joyful, uh, but it's a bit cosmetic, as you were using that word also uh, before. Um, so it's also, I think, for us to do a bit sanity check, like uh, I think 2000 were the bloom of like design can do everything, and now we are doing a bit hit by the reality that we cannot do everything. Um, so I don't have an answer, but this is, a, I think, also in the HCI, like an ongoing conversation about what is the limitations and, um, yeah, reality is different. So sorry, I share the question also. I don't have an answer. No, yeah. Yeah, I imagine it's a, yeah. it's a big uh, challenge to answer this, but thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And a very related question again online, which is um, about prototyping to demonstrate product value. Very practically, when you want to um, show behavior, what would be the behavior of the robot in the design phase? Um, how do you do that? Do you have software? So you spoke about maybe the, the sketches, uh, the boards, storyboards. Um, can you give any insight on any other methodologies that you use? We sometimes uh, use kind of a uh, skit, like short uh, acting, and we dirty prototype, like uh, let's say uh, we have <coughs> put some uh, the dolls, like Lego in human figure, and put uh, make it a physical environment where in the small scale and just uh, playing around. <laughs> with that kind of toys and uh, and we took a video to show the, the kind of uh, scenario or the flow of the or uh, any kind of uh, context that we want to uh, share to the uh, other decision makers and that's the, the, the fastest and dirtiest way and and 
Also, we use some um, uh, robot platform, like uh, such as uh, Ruki, the the robot in the One Save Day Four project, and other uh, robot like uh, from the mobile robot from Fetch Robotics, and uh, we can use the teleoperation to mimic the mocking the the uh, robotic behavior and uh, test uh, use the uh, use it the uh, uh, user test and uh, and the other software yeah and we sometimes uh, use uh, Unity or the Unreal the three D engines and the VR uh, hardware to make the uh, specific robot behavior and uh, experience it in virtual reality. Um, I think time, we have no enough time, you know? So, do we have time? Oh, one more question, do we have? I mean, yeah, I'm just wondering if we have enough time or not. Yeah, okay, so um, maybe we can talk, uh, yeah, we can keep talk <laughs> during the lunch. Uh, yeah, so thank you to all the speakers again uh, and everyone joining this session. So thank you very much.